Hey everyone, I'm Brandon from Nagios and welcome back to the channel. Today, I got a quick video for you on how to install Nagios XI in AWS using a RHEL 9 virtual machine. This will be a relatively quick video, so let's just get started. Okay, before we actually get started here, there's a couple of prerequisites I wanna point out. The first thing you'll need to do is to make sure that you have a AWS account. I'm using a free version. You get a free version up to one year. Otherwise, after that year is over, you'll have to then pay for Amazon services. The other thing you'll need to make sure you have is a valid Red Hat Linux 9 license. Without a valid license, you won't be able to update the machine or even access the appropriate repositories to be able to install XI properly. Now you can get this license directly from the Amazon Marketplace, as you can see right here. Otherwise, you'll have to navigate to Red Hat's licensing website, and we'll have that in the link in the description below. Now to get started, we're going to sign in to our AWS Management Console. We'll click Sign In. We'll be signing in as the root user today. So I will put in my email address. And then we'll grab the password here and put it in. Now, once we sign in, we'll need to navigate to EC2. This is where we'll have our virtual machine. As you can see, we have nothing running, so we will click Launch Instance. We'll name our server. For the sake of this example, I'm going to call it Nagios XI with my initials. Here in the application and OS images, we can just simply search up Red Hat, hit Enter. Now we need to make sure that we are using the 64-bit version of RHEL 9, otherwise we won't be able to properly install XI, it'll just error out. I'll be selecting this version today. We'll hit select. We'll give Amazon a second to populate with all the appropriate information. There we go. For instance type, we need to be using a T2 large or above, where the reason we need T2 large is because we need at least eight gigs of memory in order to run RHEL 9. For our key pair, and this is how we're gonna be accessing the instance, you'll need to either generate one, which you can do right here, or if you have one already created like I do, you can select it through the drop-down menu here. And I'll show you where to put that key in order for you to SSH into the machine here in just a second. For your network settings, you can have this best suited for your environment and your security needs. For the sake of this example, we will just be allowing SSH traffic from anywhere. One thing I want to point out, in order for you to properly access Nagios XI, once you have it running in the cloud, you'll need to enable this HTTPS setting here, as well as HTTP. If you don't enable these settings, you'll put in the IP address and it'll take you nowhere, and you won't be able to access the web UI of XI, but you'll still be able to access it through the SSH terminal. Finally, we'll just configure our storage here. I'm gonna bump this up to 20 gigs. It's a lot easier to put in your root volume right away, otherwise it's a pain to kind of expand it later on once you have XI installed. Finally, you can go underneath advanced details right here, and you can customize this to how you want it in your environment. In this video, we're not gonna be touching any of this, but as you can see here, there is a lot you can change and customize to your needs. Once we got this all created, we can click Launch Instance here on the right. And this will just take a couple minutes to get all set up here. Once we're in the green, we can select View All Instances on the bottom right, and we'll see our instance right here. We're gonna click on Instance ID. From this menu here, we can then go to the top right and click Connect, and now this is how we're gonna access our machine. I'll be doing it through an SSH client right here and it gives you the command that you need. Now, when you created your key, you should have been able to download it. In Windows, which is what I'll be using today, you need to save this into your .ssh folder. So here's the path to mine, and as you can see, the key is right here. We're gonna copy our command here, and then once we get back to our terminal, we will then need to change directories into our SSH client, or SSH folder, excuse me. Once we're in that folder, we can then paste in the command that we copied from AWS, hit enter. We'll just need to accept the fingerprint. And now we are in our AWS machine. To begin, the first thing that we're gonna do is change the password to our root account. So we'll do sudo root, sudo password, and then changing the password to root. 
we'll enter in an appropriate new password. Make sure you remember that. Now that we've gotten our root password changed, we're going to change users into the root account. There we go. Typed in the password wrong the first time. The next thing we're going to do is change the host name of the VM itself. So we'll do host name, CTL, host name. And I'm just going to change it to Nagios XI with my initials. And I'm also going to throw in AWS. Now the reason we're changing our host name is because when we license our RHEL 9 VM, you need to have the name in the um, in the command that changes the license. Now, the reason we want to have a different host name is because when you go into AWS or when you go into the subscription manager of RHEL 9, you'll want, or excuse me, of Red Hat, it'll make it a lot easier when you can see the actual host name of the VM versus local host, or in this case, IP 172.31, whatever. So we'll change the host name. Now the host name did not update here on the right hand side, so what I'm going to do is just reboot this machine. There's probably another way to do it, but I find it easier to just reboot the machine. And we're just going to give it a couple seconds here to come back, and we'll just simply re-enter in this command once it comes back. Okay, our machine is back online. As you can see right here, our host name has successfully changed. Now we need to properly license our machine. So again, I'm going to switch over to the root user. And the command we're going to run here is subscription manager, register. When you get a license, you'll get an org number. You'll need to put in the org number as, long, as well as the activation key here. And again, this is where you're going to want to put in the name of your virtual machine. It's a lot easier if you just copy the host name. So I will be doing that right here. Nagios XI, AWS, or excuse me, my initials, then AWS. And we'll hit enter. Now it's important to note that your war subscription type does determine the repos that are accessible to you, so make sure that you are getting a proper license. Once you see subscribed right here at the bottom, we're then going to auto attach in the license. So we'll do subscription manager, auto attach, hit enter. And as you can see right there, it says enabled. Finally, we need to enable the proper repos to install Nagios XI, download and install XI for that matter. So we will do subscription manager, config, and then here's the repo right here that you need to enable. Now we can have these commands listed below in the description, but as what you'll need to enter, hit enter, and the proper repos are enabled. Directly from this uh, folder right here, or directory, you can simply paste in the curl command with a link to the latest version of Nagios XI, and then pipe in sh right here, which will, once I hit enter and get past the uh, user needed questions, it'll download and install XI all at once. So we'll hit enter. I want to point out, as you can see here, one of the first things that XI does when it downloads and installs is it updates um, the VM. If you do not have a proper RHEL 9 license, you'll get an error right about here. And it's going to say when you cat out the install log that your license is invalid or the VM itself will tell you. Now we're going to let Nagios XI download and install itself. I'll see you guys once this is done. Okay, welcome back. As you can see, XI has successfully downloaded and installed itself. At the bottom, you'll notice an IP that happens to start with 172. As you know, 172 is a private IP. We'll need to navigate back to AWS, click back to our instance ID, and we'll need to grab the public IP for this instance. We can copy it. In the same web browser, we can then simply paste in the IP and we are brought to our instance of Nagios XI. To finish the installation process, we will click in Access XI. 
change our time zone to whatever we need it to be. And as well as our language, and we can pick our user interface. I'll be using the Neptune version. And I'll do a free license. Click Next. Change our password to something easy. There we go. Full name and email address that best suits your environment. And then click Finish Install. Here's the username and password that we have. Click Login. Nagios Admin, welcome. Agree to the terms and service. And here we are. And that wraps up today's video, folks. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any more additional questions, please visit support.nagios.com for some more documentation. Also, be sure to stop by our YouTube channel for more amazing content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.